Hello, my fellow handsome general. I'm Piotr Grotnik from Men's Improvement, and welcome to the very first live here on the Men's Improvement YouTube channel. I asked you in my community tab if you wanted to see some live streams here on the channel because I have been doing some live streams over on my Instagram and over on my TikTok. But I asked you here in a poll on my community tab if you would be interested in me going live here on the channel and that is why I am here because some of you actually voted and I'm actually going to go live and as you could have guessed based on the thumbnail on this live I'm going to talk about some fragrance some fragrances style fashion grooming skincare everything that I typically talk about on this channel but specifically in this video, I will be talking about some very high-end fragrances from the Thai slash Russian luxury fragrance brand Botnikov. And the three that I'm going to talk about are Triad, as you can see here, and Oud Maximus, and this one here, which is Oud monarch i'm going to talk about these three fragrances here and i'm also going to mention my newest pickup which i have just picked up today and uploaded a tiktok about my first impressions of it it is by it it is one of the strongest fragrances ever produced and that is followed by kerosene as you can see right here I can only say right now, this stuff is super, super potent. And if you have some overall questions about fragrances, grooming style, anything you can think of, ask away in the comment section in the live chat here. I will be more than happy to answer your questions. But without further ado, let's look at some of these fragrances. The first one that I want to try and talk about is Botnikov Triad. Let's put it on here. Oh, this is so nice, you guys. This is this is so good right here. Let me see if I can change up the camera. I think it's yeah, this is slightly better. Let me quickly have a look at the notes here. Uh, of triad oh this this stuff is so good you guys it is incredible let's look at triad so i have something to look at nose swides so the top notes of triad are tincture of wild oud from sri lanka the mid note the mid notes are magnolia, rose de mai, Indonesian boya, organic oud from China, and base notes are oud from Thailand, tonka beans, benzoin from Sumatra, and hyrosium, hy which I don't really know what is. But this is super balsamic, very dark, super complex. I, own, I basically pick up a lot of balsamic notes, the oud here, the rose. It's a very traditional fragrance when you think about rose and oud with some other supporting notes. I really like this. It is very, very balsamic with the very thick, very round oud and rose. I think if you like fragrances like Louis Vuitton Ombre Nomad or Oud Satin Mood, I think you would like this as well because this is very rose and oud heavy with some benzoins, really give it some roundness, some creaminess, some balsamic nature. And this and that is Botnikov Triad. I think this is very nice. I haven't tested the longevity of any of these, but scent-wise alone, I think this deserves a very, very high 9, if not a 10 out of 10. But it's also super expensive. All of these from Bortnikov are super expensive. 
but I can highly recommend to try this if you can. Hello, Martin. Thank you so much for joining. We are testing out some very expensive fragrances from the house of Bortnikov, and I have tried Bortnikov Triad, which is rose, oud, benzoin, and tonka. This is super nice. I'm going to go back to that a little later. The next one that I want to talk about is insane, and that is oud maximus. And this took me by surprise just looking at the notes. And that is because this has four types of roses and three types of oud, which I find to be insane. Let's give this a spray. I got it on my fingers as well. Oh my gosh, this is an oud lover's dream. This is insane this is so strong super oody as you could tell by the way a 50 ml of these fragrances costs 350 dollars and a 9 ml will set you back 90 dollars the top notes of wood maximus are bergamot sweet orange pink pepper jasmine sambac and cardamom the mid notes are Rose de Mai, Himalayan Rose, Indian Rose, Hybrid Rose, which I'm really unsure what they mean about that, Atta Gulab, which I don't know what is, Magnolia, Frangipani, Clove, and Tonka Bean. And in the base, listen up, guys, in Indian Oud, Oud, Ru, Oud Ru, Roots Trat, Oud Purple Kuchang, which is from their sister company, Feel Oud, Oud from Sri Lanka, which is also from the sister company Feel Oud, Birch Tar, Tolu Balsam, Vanilla Deer Musk, and Civet. Even though this has Deer Musk and Civet, this is not overly animalic. There's certainly some animalic qualities here, but combined with the roses and the different types of Oud that all have their different facets, this is super well blended this reminds me of the dior precious oud oil which costs approximately the same but the oil is like three grams and this is going to be a 50 ml i think this is absolutely beautiful this is such a very smooth round Oud heavy fragrance with a lot of different types of roses, as you could tell, that give this fragrance so many different complex nuances, some dark, sweet, floral, dark floral nuances. And the clove here also contributes to giving this fragrance some types of animalic facets and nuances. But I mostly pick up on the very pleasant combination of all of the roses and oods. I don't really pick up on any of the top notes either, like the sweet orange or bergamot. But that might be because of the overwhelming, overpowering types of oud and roses here. But I think this is incredible. If you love rose and if you love the combination of rose and oud, I think this is one of the very best out there. So if you haven't tried Botnikov oud, oh, that's the wrong one. If you haven't tried oud Maximus, then this is definitely it. It's super beautiful. And the last one which I have from Bortnikov, that is Oud Monarch. And guys, th this fragrance is absolutely insane. So let's give it a spray here. I was scared that I sprayed the wrong fragrance and talked about the wrong fragrance, but I was certainly right. Oud Monarch might be my favorite one and perhaps one of my most favorite fragrances ever made. Let me quickly tell you the notes of Oud Monarch because I am, I, I was and I am blown away by this fragrance. So the top notes here are Magnolia and Frangipani, 
The mid notes are rose de mai, Himalayan rose, cinnamon, and tobacco. And the base notes are oud merauk, oud kochang, which is from their sister company, Feel oud, cacao, civet, castorium, labdanum, and vanilla. And gentlemen, this fragrance right here, oud monarch, this is one of the best chocolatey fragrances I have ever tried, you guys. Oud Monarch is this super smooth, creamy, soft, chocolatey oud fragrance. The, the supporting notes here are so smooth, I can't really detect them. The only thing I pick up here are the base notes of oud and cacao. The civet and castorium perhaps might be in there to give the fragrance some sort of different facets and slight nuances to give the fragrance some complexity. But I think the overwhelming factor of this fragrance is going to be the chocolate, the cacao and oud combination. On skin, I tried this on skin, but I want to talk about this fragrance for you guys. But on skin, this fragrance smells so reminiscently of a milk chocolate bar. This is such a beautiful creation. I tell you, this is one of the very best gourmand fragrances i have ever tried i dare to say that this is a gourmand because the only thing i smell from this fragrance is a milk chocolate bar but i will dare to say that this is one of the very best oud fragrances i have ever put my nose on this is incredible I can't wait to give this a full wearing to both see the longevity and performance, but also the projection and sillage. And that is for all of these three here. I cannot wait to try all three of these fragrances to tell you more about how long they last, perform, project, how the sillage is here. But from my experience, oud in general, especially real oud, projects like a mofo they typically project and have this incredible sillage especially if the oud is real and of high grade because it's going to be super dense super thick and overall a pleasure to wear but my favorite by far or actually not by far because i think that oud monarch and oud maximus are very very close to one another in terms of being my favorite but i think all three of these all three of these portnikov fragrances here are insanely well made and i will guarantee you guys that if i don't pick up these two here which are oud maximus and oud monarch i will pick up oud monarch for sure this needs to be my collection at some point. I haven't smelled a more delicate gourmand in my life that wants to smell like chocolate. I think it's insane. And Triad is also growing on me. I think Triad is super balsamic, super creamy, very oody, slightly animalic. But all of these three fragrances are so smooth and well blended that none, none of the very different things like civet, castorium and different types of oud are sticking out anywhere. I think all of these three are super wearable, especially if you love oud, if you like the different facets that oud can have and you don't want and you're, and you're not scared of wearing something challenging. Because if your nose is trained, I don't find any of these to be overly challenging at all. All of all three of them are so good. I agree. I agree. All three of these are incredible. Let me smell Oud Maximus again. Yeah, this is so good. But I think I prefer the Dior Oud Oil. Mostly because it's more concentrate concentrated and slightly more barnyardy or more potent. 
But I think if you like the Dior Oud oil, but want something slightly more subtle and something more smoother, I think that Oud Maximus is something that you should check out because they also cost around the same. But all three of these are amazing. But another fragrance that I want to talk about on this live is Followed by Kerosene. This is perhaps the strongest fragrance to have ever been made. So this has coffee, chocolate, caramel, vanilla, and amber. And the funny thing about this fragrance is that I only pick up on coffee especially specifically roasted coffee this has so much coffee that i can't pick up on any of the notes if you watch my tiktok that i posted a few hours ago when i picked this up and gave all of you my initial first reactions i couldn't smell anything else than roasted coffee and it, this stuff is potent this is incredibly strong but i think that some people might overreact but i don't really know because i haven't worn it yet i've just sprayed it on my hand and even though i've tried to wash this off three to four times now i can still pick up on the scent profile i will say that whenever this starts to dry this becomes more of a milky espresso shot type of coffee i don't really pick up on any chocolate and if i do i think it's very very dark bitter chocolate that really supports the very grounded roasted coffee so i think that this fragrance followed by kerosene is going to be challenging for 99% of people, not only watching here, but overall as fragrance consumers. This is insanely strong. And I think on people who have very strong, let me rephrase that, I think that on people who have very good skin chemistry and that give off a lot of projection, sillage and longevity whenever they wear fragrances, this will be nuclear. I can't wait to give this a try whenever I go to work to actually get people's reactions of how strong this is. I'm going to give this a full wearing to not only look at how long this lasts, but also how it projects and how people, um, what people think of it and actually what people will, how people will react basically, because I was scared to purchase this. I actually got it for a decent price. I think I got it for 110, 130 bucks from a friend, NS Al Oud, which I'm very happy for. I'm very happy to have this in my collection because this is such a divisive fragrance. If you love coffee and you want one of the strongest fragrances ever, then this could be something for you. But if you're not the biggest fan of coffee and fragrance, I would stay away, especially because of the raw power of this. And whoever sent me some hearts, I appreciate that a lot. But this is so strong. Actually, I want to put this on skin again because I think, yeah, I needed that. Whew. This is insanely potent. So let, let me move here. Yeah, this stuff is super bitter, super realistic of coffee. And there's different types of coffee notes in perfumery. Some are more milky, some are more roasted, some are more grounded, and some generally smell like the flavor of an artificial coffee. But this, this takes it to the next level. This smells super super photorealistically of roasted coffee beans right up to your nose like if you open a fresh bag of coffee that is what you're getting i don't really pick up on any of the supporting notes like vanilla cacao chocolate caramel i don't really pick up on that at all No, I, I really don't. I'm trying, but I only pick up on the roasted coffee. But 
Wow, this is insane. I will be super impressed if there's ever a person who have actually emptied one of these bottles. As you can see or not on the screen, this is basically brand spanking new. The person that I bought it off of told me that he just, just tried it and I gave, and gave it a one wearing and then sold it to me. So followed by kerosene. This is, this is next level here. This is so insanely strong. And the funny thing is whenever I test fragrance, I need to have my nose up close here. But I think this is enough. Like this was only two sprays that I put on my hand here. And it's super strong still. Is it similar to any other coffee perfumes? Well, I want to say that it's similar to Halloween Man X, but if imagine Halloween Man X being a newborn and this being the the grandfather. So Halloween Man X is also roasted coffee, but combined with some other notes like cardamom and I think some vanilla as well that gives it more of a spicy coffee cardamom type of fragrance with some other supporting notes whereas this is straight up straight up coffee roasted coffee straight from a freshly opened bag of coffee beans that's the only thing i can think of when i smell this fragrance coffee 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 And when this begins to dry, this becomes slightly creamier, less roasted, but slightly more bitter. I think that the chocolate accord here is some sort of dark chocolate because this doesn't give off milky chocolate vibes like Oud Monarch does, which is this very milky chocolate type of fragrance. But this... This is most likely a very bitter dark chocolate accord because this supports the roasted coffee that is also super bitter so much. Sounds nice, great buy friend. Well, thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you for stopping by as you told me you would and I'm happy that you would be here. I think you're gone now, but thank you for commenting and being here. Ooh, but it... As you sprayed it and you want to smell the bottle, it is almost unbearably strong. Whew, this is insane. Oh, wow. Whew. Super strong, this one. Let me put it here. And the next fragrance that I'm going to be making a short review of on the channel and on the TikTok. I always post shorts quicker on TikTok because that's where I have the least amount of content set on a schedule. Whereas here on the YouTube channel, you have a video every Sunday from yours truly and some shorts once or twice per week. But the TikToks that I'm going to post and that I, that I am posting are always the quickest and always the most relevant and newest in terms of the content that I produce. But the next fragrance I'm going to be making a review of, uh, the next as of recording is going to be Kayali Invite Only Amber. This is so underrated in my opinion. I have some skin that I can put this on and I only have this small dabber here. I don't think that is enough. Oh, that was more than enough. I hate these small bottles here because they're so uncontrollable. Yeah, this is such a fun fragrance and it's super unisex as well. Possibly leaning more feminine, but in my opinion, I think this is super unisex. And this is Invite Only Amber. Oh, wow. This is 
slightly sweetened with some honey. There's possibly some cherry sweetness, some chocolate as well. This, what I like about Invite Only Amber from Kayali is that it tries to be a gourmand, but not really. It tries being a gourmand because all of these different edible types of nuances and facets that it has. But I actually think that it's so sweet in such different ways that it's not fully a gourmand, but a very, very sweet fragrance with some gourmand touches. I actually just bought that one. Yeah, I, I thought so. You bought both Young Pistachio Gelato and this one now. Super. This is such a great fragrance, actually. And... What I can remember this last 8 to 10 hours on my skin. Not incredible projection, but I think that might be because of this small splash bottle here that I got from Sephora. Which I think could be a factor of not so good projection and sillage. But I still think this is super well made. Especially for the price, they're not super expensive Kayali fragrances. They are slightly pricey, but compared to other stuff out there, I think this is okay. But I need to give it a full wearing before actually recording my review because I think I think this is this is sweet. This is almost a gourmand. It's slightly oriental. And it's super complex as well. But I think I've smelled some things out there on the fragrance market that slightly remind me of this. But I can't quite pinpoint what. I really like this fragrance. I can't wait to talk about it in a short review because I think this is actually a very well-made fragrance. That was Kayali Invite Only Amber. And another fragrance that I want to talk about here is a fragrance that I'm going to post a TikTok about tomorrow because it's a brand new brand here from Denmark that, that are releasing their brand new fragrance, which they kindly sent to me. And my bottle is number 37 out of, I don't know how many, because the fragrance is called Limited Edition. And that is Regil. Regil is a Danish fragrance brand that takes inspiration from Arabic culture and oh I'm only picking up on kerosene and and some other stuff. My finger smell of kerosene's followed. Ooh, it's super oh, it's super dense, super strong. I can't really smell anything from this. But Regil Limited Edition is a, is a fragrance that is inspired by Arabian Stonka. And you will also see that on the notes. Because the notes of this fragrance are rose, a pinch of oud, amber, honey. I think they're named some sweet notes that I think they're referencing to the sugar cane that Arabian Stonka also uses. And some honey. This is, and of course, Tonka. My fingers smell so much of followed. It's insane. Let me put it on some paper because I can't smell anything. Yeah, this is syrupy. It's sweet, but it's not syrupy as in maple syrup. This is more honey sweet, but the honey isn't super pronounced either. This is super sweet slightly spicy and overall very sweet this reminds me of arabian's tonka but imagine arabian's tonka and removing the sugar cane and replacing that with honey arabian's tonka is this very sweet slightly sugary a little spicy and perhaps some and perhaps smooth leathery fragrance 
But the Gilles limited edition here is reminding me of that a lot, but it's much more dense in the opening. It's much more in your face whenever you spray it. I had both Arabian's Tonka here on my hand here and Regil Limited Edition on my left hand. And comparing them side by side, whenever I sprayed them on initially, Regil was the stronger version of the DNA. They remind so much of each other, but Regil Limited Edition is just more syrupy. It's thicker it's denser but it's not as sugary it's more syrupy honey like and whenever it becomes whenever it starts to dry it becomes slightly it becomes even more reminiscent of the arabian's tonka dna because it loses the body of the top notes and it becomes almost the same as arabian's tonka but not as strong in the dry down that's where it compensates it's very, very cheap and affordable, but the projection and sillage is not the same. Arabian's Tonka on my skin is super radiant, very, very strong and far projecting. But the thing is, I get anosmic to the Arabian's Tonka DNA. Both this and Arabian's Tonka, I get anosmic to, so I can't really smell it on myself. But people could smell me from 5 to 10 meters away whenever I wore Arabian's Tonka. So the projection is there. I just get anosmic to it. But with this, it was not entirely the same. I got around an arm's length of projection for an hour or two, and then it became a mild skin scent. I still really like it, and for the price, I have also given it a fairly high rating. I, and I think that if you live in Denmark and you have the possibility of spending 300 danish kroner and you like fragrances like arabian's tonka but want something slightly less sugary and something more smooth possibly something thicker in the at the top and something that possibly dries smoother and less strong in the base i think that regime limited edition could be something for you and it only costs 300 danish kroner and i think that's a fairly well priced fragrance especially because i think the quality here is actually very good i need to stop doing that i can only smell followed by kerosene and the thing is not only did i try arabian's tonka and regime limited edition you can buy this at their own website called regil I think if you type in Regil on Google, you will find their website. And they're actually releasing this fragrance tomorrow. Hence why I'm posting this. Tick, hence why I'm posting my TikTok about it on TikTok tomorrow, whenever the brand opens up and actually releases this to the public. So I can't wait for you guys to try it out. If you are going to, especially if you live in Denmark, because again, 300 Danish Kroner is not a huge amount of money, especially if you want to try something that reminds you of Arabian's Tonka. But I actually also tried one of my sponsors' uh, fragrance that reminds me of Arabian's Tonka. Let me see if I can find it here for you in my sample bag here. Oh, M97. This is Parfume Labs M97. There, there we go. This is Parfume Labs clone of the Arabian's Tonka DNA. And in my opinion, this reminds me insanely much of Arabian's Tonka. And I tried to pinpoint some differences in the top, in the mid, in the base. But it was super difficult. The only thing that I could really see the difference between Arabian's Tonka and this version was that this didn't project anywhere near as much as Arabian's Tonka. And I think the reason being is that Parfume Labs fragrances are x rayed 35% oil concentration, whereas Arabian's Tonka is an Eau de Parfum, which gives it a possibility to project even more because of the alcohol in the fragrance. 
but this didn't project anywhere near and i think the main cause is the higher oil concentration which get, which makes the fragrance slightly closer to the skin and doesn't give off as much projection but still gives it a lot of longevity and performance and this lasted as long as both Regil limited edition and Arabian Tongue, which was 10 to 12 hours. So I think this is also very impressive. The only thing I could actually pinpoint was throughout the wearing. The scent profile wasn't as dense. It wasn't as nuanced. But again, the price difference between Arabian's Tonka and this one, even though Arabian's Tonka is slightly affordable because it's a Montal, which don't really make super expensive fragrances, this is even more affordable. And you can also buy a 5 ml SI got here for free from the brand for around 49 Danish Kona, which I think is around seven, eight dollars, which is not that bad at all. And this is higher oil, oil concentration. So if you care about that, you have Parfume Labs M97 right here. And I think you should definitely check them out because Parfume Lab is one of the few houses here in the Scandinavian region and in general that I think create super high quality clones of fragrances that are not super far off. They're not inspired by, even though they tell you on the website that they're inspired by, I can still pick up the nuances, the same quality, the same nuances that the originals. But I can tell you that these fragrances from Parfume Lab are super high quality. And actually, now that I have my bag here, I want to show you a few fragrances that I'm going to be wearing very soon. I want to make a TikTok about the rest of my niche for all samples. And the rest of them are, I have used Blackberry Rum. This is one of the very best clones or inspired by fragrances ever made. This is a mix of Tom Ford Tuscan leather and ombre leather, but inserted with a Blackberry and a Rum Accord. I think I have more paper here so I can spray it on. Give me a moment, I'll put some on here. Yeah, this is so good. It's juicy, it's boozy, it's dark, it's leathery. Niche for all Blackberry Rum. This is one of the most unique fragrances that they offer and one of the highest rated niche for all fragrances that I have tried. I think I gave this a 9.8 out of 10. This is incredibly strong, dense, thick. It has the performance, it has the longevity, it has the projection and sillage. It's so good. And I told myself if I were to buy three niche for all fragrances, I would pick up Honey Tobacco, which is their Nexus or Pure Heaven DNA clone. I would pick up their Pineapple Oak, which is the best Creed Aventus clone I have ever put my nose on. It's so good. It's so strong. It's so long lasting. And I would pick up this. Blackberry Rum is where it's at. I think it's insanely well made and super strong stuff as well. But I also have oriental incense which is their amouage interlude clone which i also think is super nice which i am still in the midst of testing and tobacco vanilla which is their parfum de marie herit clone which i wasn't the biggest fan of but it's still very well made just not as well as i would have wanted it to be so i'm so i'm still trying to make reviews of these and give you a buying guide, or not really a buying, or be, buying guide because I already made that here on the channel, but some sort of a slideshow of ranking niche for all fragrances that I've tried from worst to best. So that is something that I'm working on. I'm also looking to try and test out my small sample of Tom Ford Noir Extreme Parfum and compare it to the original Noir Extreme. That wasn't supposed to go like that. Yeah. I didn't think 
very much of Noir Extreme Parfum when it, when it came out. But as I tried it and as I had it for a very short period of time, I could really see the difference. It was slightly darker, slightly deeper, slightly more complex and less sweet, but more spicy. I think I'm going to make a TikTok video about the difference between Noir Extreme and Noir Extreme Parfum. So that is also something I'm working on. And let me look here. Whenever I have the time, I need to, I need to give Honey Oud from Flores a wearing because the scent profile here is insane. It smells so good. I want to make a video of don't buy this fragrance, buy this one instead. And I will make a segment if this performs well on my skin, both longevity and prediction wise, that if you want to buy Montal Honey Aoud, you should buy Flores Honey Oud instead. I think this is much better scent wise. This is more of, this is slightly less honey, but more of a dry Oud Accord. This is less medicinal. It's not as headache inducing as Montal can be sometimes. It's more refined and slightly higher quality. And I just need to test it out whenever I have the time to do so. But I have so many other things I need to try and review. But other than that, I need to give Island the Lush and Silky Woods Elixir from Goldfield and Banks some time as well. Because these have been hyped on Danish TikTok lately, especially Silky Woods Elixir, which has this super unique Australian Oud Accord, which is apparently more environmentally friendly compared to other types of Oud. And I actually also really like the scent profile here. It's dry, it's woody, it's smooth, it's slightly sweet and spicy. It's super interesting. And actually, I also have a sample of a slightly expensive fragrance, and that is Ambre Chromatique from Maison Crivelli, which I can thank my friend Emmanuel for sending me. And I have very intrigued to trying anything from Maison Crivelli because whenever I did, half of the testers were either empty or I didn't have the time to test them because there was so many other things I was eager to try, like Roja Sweetie Aoud or Amber Aoud or Burlington 1819, which I think was amazing. So I need to give this a try. And I also really want to try Oud Maracuja, which I really am intrigued to try. Mason Crivelli is such a good house. Yeah, it is a good house of what I heard. But my issue, the things that I've tried from Maison Crivelli are that they focus a lot on making the top of the fragrances super dense, strong, and captivating. But they are lacking in actually making the base and the mid of the fragrance as strong, as, as captivating as the top notes. So whenever... They are making a fragrance. They focus a lot on making super well-made top notes that captivate you. So I haven't given Oud Maracuja a try because the, the tester was empty when I was trying it. The passion fruit really captures you with the other supporting notes like the Oud Accord, the leather, the rose. But supposedly the Oud Accord, which is an accord, by the way, as the owner of the brand tells us on TikTok, I think for the price you would like real Oud and an estimate of how much real Oud there actually is instead of a synthetic Oud Accord, especially for the Maison Crivelli price. But my critique to the house would be that they're focusing way too much on the top notes and neglecting the mid and the base. But I need to give the fragrance a try to really confirm that myself but let's see what other things i need to try gosh there's so many things in here oh a summer banger that i need to give a wearing to give you a full review is wilhelm parfumerie mango skin i 
really like this so far. I need to give it a full wearing to see how long it lasts and projects and see if the price is justifiable, especially because they're getting more and more expensive. And I really like the bottle design actually. But if you're looking for a very, very mango heavy summer fragrance, check out Mango Skin from Wilhelm Parfumerie. I think you would love this, whoever is watching in this live. I know that you, Dennis, who is in this live, you've talked about this briefly, I think. I am really in love with the scent profile here, but I just need to see how long it lasts before I tell you if it's better than God of Fire, in my opinion. I have recently rated God of Fire from Stefan Umber Luca at 10 out of 10, and I want to see if this is anywhere near or anywhere close to a 10 out of 10 as well. Also, a, a few fragrances that I got gifted by a fellow Danish TikToker, which is not very large on the platform. I need to find the other sample here. Gosh, there's so much here. There's some more samples for y'all. It's a place in France where you can make your own fragrances. The dry down is a little like La Via Belle, and that's why I'm not totally in love with mango scents. Okay, I understand. Yeah, La Via Belle can be considered as overused in terms of a feminine leaning fragrance. I get that, but I actually really like La Via Belle. But I think I need to smell it more in order to agree with you. But there's a place in France, apparently, that gives you the opportunity to try some blended ingredients or prior prioritary blend. What, what's the name of that? Proprietary blends of ingredients like licorice, oud, chocolate, vanilla, whatever. They have some proprietary blends of notes that you can mix together and make your own fragrance. And I was gifted something that he called smoky licorice. And he was also so kind to gift me if I can find it somewhere. Oh my God, this is insanely hard to find. There it is. Sicilian summer. I am really intrigued to actually trying these because I don't think he was a part of actually composing it. He was just deciding what types of notes he wanted in them. And I don't really know what's in here, so I will need to guesstimate what I, what there's in here. But I can't wait to try these as well, because of my first impression, this smoky licorice is insanely well made. The licorice is super prominent. There's some incense, perhaps. It is just sounds and smells incredible, so I need to give this a full wearing. But there's so many samples here. Oh my God. Look at how many samples I'm holding. That's how many fragrances I need to try. I also have a bag of Dior fragrances, which I don't need to talk about a lot, but there's a lot of them in here that I'm going to take with me to my trip to Dubai, like Tobacolor, Vanilla Diorama, Gris Dior, and the Aromantons, of course. I love the Aromantons. And what do I have here? I have a lot of samples from the Danish store Metas, which I need to give a try. So there's some narcotic delight. There's some boss bottled elixir. There's actually a triumph of Bacchus in here. Um, there's some Godolphin. There's some... Absolute Aventus as well. There's so many different things I need to try here because all of these fragrances in here are either so well made or basic, but I need to talk about that a little later. And what do we have here? Le Sable Rose. This is, in my opinion, one of the very best rose fragrances ever created. I love this stuff. Louis Vuitton Le Sable Rose. This with Ombre Nomad, Pacific Chill, and Afternoon Swim are some of the fragrances I need in my collection at some point from Louis Vuitton. 
And again, it is Le Sable Rose from Louis Vuitton. It, this is insane. I love it. And so from one Louis Vuitton fragrance to another, this is the most underrated Louis Vuitton fragrance there is. And that is Louis Vuitton Fleur du Dessert. And this is a honey and broxen oud fragrance. This is so nice. And actually, if you want to try this fragrance here, but you don't have the money for it, I can highly recommend that you check out the previous thing that I mentioned. And it is their newest bestseller. And that is W159 from Parfume Lab. They have recently made a clone of Fleur du Dessert that is right here. And off of the initial spray, I think they are super similar. And that is super impressive because of the difference of available aroma chemicals, raw materials, ionones, all of the things that can be used in here. The, the quality difference is insane. But at the same time, the initial smell of this is super nice as well, in my opinion. So I can't wait to talk more about this fragrance and perhaps give you a review of W159 from Perfume Lab. Remember to use my code MENS10 that can also be found in the description of this live here to save yourself 10% off and support the channel. So that is highly recommended, especially if you want to save some money as well. Mm, let's see what we have in here. Also, we have Sergio Uden. If you like fragrances like Chanel Allure en Edition Blanche and you want something niche like of that and you like the brand of Sergeoff, I can highly recommend this one. Can't wait to wear this in the summer as well. I think I think I will take this with me to Dubai as well because I will have a vanilla heavy citrusy fragrance with me for the insane weather that they have there. So it sounds super nice. Again, Amber Chromatic, I will need to try that at some point. Mixed Emotions is, in my opinion, top two or top three from Byredo. Byredo is super overpriced and super overrated, but this, this is a killer. This smells so good. Black tea. Oh my God, this is so good. And I can't wait to try these as well from Kendora Parfum, which I think is super nice and a cool concept. You can make your own fragrance. Quirky, but also a little fun. This is my sample of Mandarin Diamalfi. I have an empty bottle there, and I think this is one of the best summer fragrances from Tom Ford, which I think is amazing. Doesn't last long on my skin, but it's such a pleasant fragrance. Sweet Mandarin, orange, basil, such an incredible summer fragrance. And the Bois Marocain, one that isn't talked about a lot from Tom Ford, but I actually really like it, especially if you love Cedar Wood. This is super woody, very professional, hyper masculine in my opinion. Also lasts a good amount of hours as well. Also, my most favorite fragrance of all time. This is Tom Ford Tobacco Wood. I think that's what's in here. Yeah, look at this small cute bottle here. This is a 4 ml splash bottle of Tom Ford Tobacco Oud. Yeah, this is perfection in a bottle. I love this fragrance. There is nothing in this world that will make me think twice about the best fragrance of all time. This, in my opinion, is the best fragrance ever made, especially for men because this leans hyper masculine. This is boozy, it's dark, it's woody. It's tobacco heavy. It's oh, the oud accord here is also super well made. It's a dry, slightly dark, a little animalic oud, but not really. But it has the depths of a real oud accord. That's why I think it's so well made. And I, I can't get enough of it. I don't wear it as much because it is a special fragrance for me. But I love Tom Ford tobacco. Oud. It's my most favorite fragrance ever made. And the old version of Vani Fatal. In my opinion, in my opinion, this is way better than the new formulation of Vani Fatal. The new formulation of Vani Fatal is not boozy. It's, it might be a little boozy, 
but it's not as boozy as this one. This formulation is slightly spicy. It's a little leathery. It's super complex with a lot of different nuances, qualities, depths. There are so many things going on in this version of Vanille Fatale, whereas the new formulation is just a dry, powdery vanilla with some coriander to give it some spice and some texture at the top. But I don't find it to be as boozy as the original formulation. So I would love to have an old formulation bottle of this fragrance here. Yeah, it's better than the new one. I highly agree, Dennis. Thank you for interacting. I really appreciate it. I love interacting in your live streams. So therefore, I'm very appreciative of you interacting in mine. Again, honey oud, I need to give this a wearing because it's such a nice honey and oud combination fragrance. Goldfield and Banks are killing it here in the Scandinavian regions. I think they are picking up some steam, some hype, and I really like Silky Woods Elixir. I think it's super nice. And I can't wait to try Island Lush. It's apparently a panty dropper. It's apparently super sexy. I can't wait to try it. What do we have here? Renaissance from Sergeov. Okay, I need. To, I want to try this again because I gave it an eight point four out of ten, and I want to give this a try once more. Yeah, this is zingy. It's bright. It's crisp. It's it's lemon and mint. Oh, it's such a delightful summer fragrance. On some people, it might last a long time and project a lot, but it doesn't on my skin. It projects okay for a summer fragrance and it lasts okay. Not a big deal, but it smells so bright, so zingy, so sharp of mint. It's super nice. It's an underrated summer fragrance in my opinion. Not talked about as much. All of the hype goes to Nexos from the slime from Search of. But it's okay. I think I'm going to take this one with me to Dubai as well. So I can use it up for a reason. Uh, what do we have? Mango skin. I need to try it once more. Oh, and I recently got a sample of the re-released Armani Code or the Toilet. It's a soapy, woody, fresh, slightly aromatic fragrance. It's all right. I'll give it a wearing and possibly give it a rating at some point. It's decent. I also have got my sample of Bergamotto di Calabria from Aqua di Parma. And let's take a new piece of paper. I actually need to try that one because I can't really remember how this smells. Mm, there it is. Oh, super juicy, zesty bergamot. So simple, yet so pleasant. Very weak, but super simple, pleasant, bright, citrusy fragrance. If you don't care about longevity and projection and you want to splash yourself and almost bathe in a fragrance, Bergamotto di Calabria is something I can highly recommend. Such a nice summer fragrance. And the Free from Goldfield and Banks. Pacific Rock Moss is all right. Southern Bloom is better. It's exotic. It's exclusive. It's super complex with a lot of things going on. And Bohemian Lime is also very nice. It doesn't smell of Creed Aventus, as one of our fellow TikTok creators told us recently. But this is super nice. It's bright. It's juicy. It's very citrusy in a very lime type of way. I really like Bohemian Lime. So check it out if you haven't already. And what do we have still? Yeah, my niche for all samples. My Noir Extreme Parfum. Oh, the, one of the best Gourmand fragrances ever made, Italica. This is my second sample. I will get myself a bottle of this at some point this year. It's insane. I love it. 
Which fragrance has have given you 27 hours of longevity? Not a lot, especially for me, but Italica is one of them. My perfume lab samples. And where I will put my Bortnikov fragrances. So thank you so much for joining to, the, to those who have been in here for testing out Bortnikov Triad, Bortnikov Oud Maximus, and Bortnikov Oud Monarch. I will test out these in terms of longevity and projection and performance, all of the type stuff. But I think I'm going to go now because I have some things to do. I have some chores to do. And I think this was a nice live. My The first one was possibly a little awkward, a little lonely. Only one to two, maybe three people. I saw on the counter that a max of five people were in here at the same time. That was okay. Let's try some other time. And I was also checking out Regime Limited Edition and followed by Kerosene. I, I, th I still think this is insane. This is insanity in a bottle. Italica is insane. 27 hours of longevity and projection. This projected after 24 hours on my skin. Which fragrance does that? I haven't tried a lot of fragrances to have done that except Sauvage, Elixir, and Italica, which I think was insane. I need a bottle of Italica at some point. But, gentlemen, Dennis, if you're still here, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining. And thank you so much for talking about fragrances and perhaps some other stuff here on this live. And I want to thank you so much for joining and see you in my other videos on TikTok, on Instagram, anywhere where you might find me. And of course, as always, gentlemen, smile more. It's free.